Hey, look, we can agree to disagree. <laughs> and here's the thing. Here's another thing, beautiful uh, people out there. We ain't God. He ain't God either. Nigel ain't God. <laughs> Levi ain't God. David ain't God. You talk to God and you ask him what you, what, what I should and do that, for and myself. That, and that's the problem we run into with a lot of Christians because when you give them truth, they were like, oh, you're not God. I'm not going to listen to you. But it's true, though. When, when the word is plain and all you're trying to do is give it to them I mean, in I'm love, God, you know, and because we live in a hypersensitive uh, society, you can't give people truth in love at all without them feeling I mean, offended. I- you are now listening to the Hold Your Point Podcast, a platform dedicated to discussing millennial culture and experience through a Christian lens. Redefining who we are with cultural excellence and as children of the Most High. Cultivating thought provoking discussion and spreading the Word of God with love. Hold your point. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, peace to the planet. This is the Hold Your Point Podcast. We are the Hold Your Point Podcast crew. My name is Nigel James. I got DJ in front of me, Lee Strauss and DTH to my right. What's happening, fellas? Yo, how we Yo. doing? What's happening? What's up, y'all? Oh, good, man. Feeling good. Giving all credence and and, and dedication and, and all that to the creator. Yay. The most high. You know that saying by Dion where he says, if you look good, you... You play good, mm. play good. You feel good. Wait, how's it go? Be yeah, doing. I was gonna say. I, I thank you all for the beginning. I, 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 no, I think no, if you, you look good, you, you feel look good. You feel good. You feel good. You, you, feel feel good, good, you play, play good. good. And you play good. They pay good. Oh, nice. Right. <laughs> well, that's team, good. That's good, effort, y'all. That's good. Team effort. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> all right, man. Well, we got a good episode. We, we about to jump into today, and we want to talk a little bit about. The origins of Easter, mm-hmm. um, as Easter is, um, you know, right around the corner for many people. And, um, you know, for all of our biblical Bible scholars who are who are who who, who know the word front and back, this is not going to be a, a, a full length deep dive on the origins of Easter. So we are not criticizing the comments, but this is a very brief synopsis of the origins of Easter. So um, with that. I guess we'll open up to say, like, you know, where does Easter come from? Or what is what is Easter supposed to be all about? Anybody? <laughs> I sound like you wanted to speak. Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, no, I was just breathing hard. My bad. I'm coming in. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, <laughs> Easter is, well, what is Easter now, right? Easter is the celebration that the way it is known today, right? Easter... Christian churches, organizations celebrate Easter as the um, related to the resurrection of Jesus Jesus. Christ. And it's held between on a Sunday between March and April. I think the date changes sometimes here and there. Um, But they, you know, we, they believe in a resurrected Jesus as do we. And they, they celebrate that, that fact with the celebration of Easter. Um, it's been going on for quite a while, but um, I, I think there are a lot of devout, well-meaning folks who who partake in Easter services and um, ascribe to the things of Easter from a good place in their heart. And, you know, I think that's worth mentioning because I think that's something that God looks at. Um, but, you know, we're going to talk a little bit more about what it comes from. But I mean, really today that's, that's what it is, right? Yeah. People is, is yep. celebrating the, the resurrected Jesus. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, <clears throat> I guess we'll, we'll jump in. So, so yeah, I mean, and I think uh, a lot of it comes from where this Easter Sunday ID ideology comes from is um, the resurrection of Jesus as DCH was put in it. So, you know, they say that Jesus was uh, put in the tomb on Friday and then the three days and three nights would take him to Sunday but, you know, with deep, uh, deeper understanding and independent thought process and reading the word for ourselves, and we find that's not actually the case where, you know, the three days and three nights actually started from the Thursday, which would have took them to Saturday. And then how the verse says that as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, Mary and Martha was approaching the sepulcher and Jesus was already gone. So, again, what that points to is 
where interpretation creates this huge divide. And, you know, based on interpretation, we have a variety of religions and people now on celebrating and keeping church on different days and everything else. Yeah, no, I'll get in here a little bit. Um, when it comes to Easter, you know, people definitely equate it to um, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, but as, as Nadra kind of um, definitely laid out, it, it's 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 different. And when you kind of break it down biblically, you know, the timelines don't add up um, when you when you break down the actual time of when Jesus um, supposed um, died versus when he was resurrected, as the Bible depicts, early in the morning. Um, and so when, you know, we have these discrepancies, I should say, and people, I guess, I don't know, focus on them because of these splits, as Nigel was talking about. Now we have these religions, we have a whole whole different sex, sex of, um, of religious p- people who believe different aspects just based off one little difference that happens. And so now we have Easter, as people celebrate it, um, which it doesn't, I should say, give a... It's the same. It's the same principle, I think, for Christmas for me. When I come to that, like, yes, it's important to memorialize Jesus' death. It's important to, or to, you know, it's nice to see. Or I guess it would be good to see when he was born and to kind of like remember that. And, and, and from the from the Christmas standpoint, but you want to get that accurate. You don't want to try and like guess and then um, have a different point, have a different point of view, which causes divisions. It causes these splits. You know, you want to lay down the facts and, and really dive into the scriptures when you're trying to look at these things. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is DJ. I know you guys are enjoying the podcast, but please like, share and subscribe to this video. Now enjoy the rest of the podcast. Yeah. What you just said is you think it's kind of the same. You look at it in the same viewpoint as Christmas. Because it technically kind of is, right? It all kind of stems from the same place, from the uh, old uh, Egyptian stories and and goddesses and gods and different things like that. Um, So that's essentially what what it is. Um, But if you dive deeper in it, um, it's essentially, I believe her name was Ishtar. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. I believe her name was Ishtar, and and she was a, a, a goddess back in the, the olden days, as I, as I mentioned before. Um, and there's all sorts of things in which they represented, what was represented with her were like eggs and uh, uh, rabbits, right? Was it rabbits? Mm-hmm. Eggs yeah. and rabbits, which is depicted now in uh, the quote-unquote uh, Easter holiday, which is, uh, but it's, I always find it very interesting, fascinating, how like so many years can go by, but the trends still are there. Right. Mm. They just let me know the influence that these people had back in the Roman days. Like, man, it's crazy. <laughs> like some of these statues that these guys have, like, like the God, right? right. The gods it, it is like no one's since the time of, I guess, their visit here on Earth. Mm-hmm. Have we ever seen a, 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 a set of people like these these people? Right. That Yeah, that's a great point, because when we think about living in the States and we think of a lot of times we'll think of the United States as the most powerful country Mm -hmm. in the world and things like that. But like, you know, we look at influence over the the world, like Mm -hmm. Rome Mm -hmm. has been instrumental and its influence lasts today still. So Uh that's, that's a huge point. And it actually brings me to something I wanted to talk about because we're talking about the origins now. Right. So as, as Daryl said, Ishtar also goes by Astarte or uh, Ashtoreth, which is the Hebrew form of the word, the Babylonian goddess of fertility. Mm -hmm. And when you think of fertility, um, you think of life. And so when you mentioned the bunny rabbit, which we know the Easter bunny is a big part of Easter, you know, these animals were looked at as a representation of fertility because of how many babies they can have so quickly. So obviously they they have a lot of life in them, right? So you you see where the, the parallel is drawn there. Um, Also, another thing, the primary festivals associated with worshiping this uh, false god um, Ishtar was during the springtime, which we know Easter is in the springtime as well. They're going to eat it all up. Yeah, I'm just saying. So, like, and then there's another one. I I think maybe the biggest part is the, the Council of Nicaea in 325 A.D., which... 
at the time, Constantine, who was in charge of Rome, saw that there were disputes among those in, in, you know, as they're working to collect the different thoughts of those in, in Christianity mm. and, and what to align on. So they had this council to, to talk about these differences. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that came out of that council was mandating that there was uniform observance of Easter on Sunday. Oh, is that right? Yes. Mm. And so that's a part of why it's continued to be held on Sunday now is coming from that, uh, that council of Nicaea in 325 AD. And then with the bunnies, something I saw that was really interesting or the eggs, I should say, um, the Encyclopedia Britannica says that the first recorded use of painted and decorated Easter eggs was in the 13th century. Mm. As far as we know, that's the earliest time that this ha uh, was taking place. The 13th century, which is what, 1300, right? Um, so that's well after the time <laughs> Christ <laughs> died and, and rose again, right? So like Clearly, this is not something that originated with the church, right? Mm -hmm. It's something that came much later. And so that alone doesn't wouldn't say that it's wrong, but like, but that's clearly an indication, right? Like this is not something that the first Christians were doing, right? That the church was doing at the time. This is a practice that came about later on. Yeah, for sure. And even in the essence of deconstruction, right? Because that's where a lot of people are right now is challenging their previous beliefs and looking for deeper truths, even on the word Easter. So Easter or the old English is Eostri or something like that, which mm. referred to a pagan festival celebrating uh, the arrival of spring and the goddess Eostra or Astora or Ishtar. So again, it's just, you know, where a lot of people now who are coming out of Halloween just to make a parallel because they're waking up even if they're on Sunday and like, you know what? We're not trunking or treating anymore and we're not going to bring it into the church so the kids can get candy and stuff. We're, we're cutting ties with it. And then, you know, again, just looking in deeper, like Easter is right in the same bag with Halloween and Christmas because these things do not have like any part to do with Jesus, but they are forced upon Christians that came from an origin of paganism. Yeah, which, uh, which you said, because I wanted to mention that with the Council of Nicaea, I, the result of that was, okay, this is what it's going to be, and those who don't agree will be persecuted. So, yep. like he's saying, it's not just that Easter became the way, the law of the land, but those who don't agree with it will be persecuted. So, you know, we're a little removed from that type of reaction right now. You know, pe people are free, at least in this country, to kind of celebrate what they want and follow whatever they want, but... Back then, Rome was like, no, if you're not going to conform to this, you're not going to be you're not going to be accepted. And Ishtar, <clears throat> just kind of going back on, on Ishtar there, um, wasn't she like depicted as like a sun goddess? Was that was that like S-U-N? I, I think so. OK, I think there's elements of that in there, because I always find it very interesting, like a lot of the, those people back then, like a lot of times they worship the sun mm -hmm. and I, you know so i i kind of did a little homework on in terms of like you know why would why would they always worship the sun but then i was like well let me think about it like the sun provides energy um warmth um vegetation food and different things like that so i and then you got to also look at it like this they wasn't blessed to have a hvac system like we're blessed to have <laughs> you know what i'm saying so like I said, it'll, it'll, it'll provide comfort to them. Um, but I thought it was pretty interesting. Like the sun uh, was, is always depicted when you look at those uh, pagan, uh, I guess, people. Yeah. And so the other thing I saw too, like just kind of bringing it back to today is, you know, good old transformation church. And uh, they put out a, um, a message, I guess their their creative director or something put out a message on the church website or some fashion they put it out where people could see it. And they said that this year, Transformation Church will not be using the words resurrection, Calvary, or the blood of Jesus. Really? Yes, mm -hmm. because, I mean, why? because like they that. said that they don't want to create an environment where people feel like they are alienated right. or not a part 
of what's going on. So they're even though they're looking at it as Easter, they're not going to. So they was talking about, well, what is the sermon? What are they going to say in the sermon then if everybody coming for Easter service? Like, and y'all not using the word resurrection? <laughs> Wait, what? Mm-hmm. So it's like even the, the decaying Sunday system is moving further and further away from even half the truth. I didn't. That's news <laughs> that's to me, funny. man. You're saying this to me. I didn't hear. That doesn't make any sense. Why would that? How could that be? What, it's offensive? triggering, David. <laughs> triggering in what way? <laughs> I don't understand. It's I gaslighting. Mean, that's what the gospel is. I mean, if at least if you're going to take part in this, I mean. Look, people just don't want direction anymore. People don't want to be told what to do. People want to do their own thing. No, they want to be deconstructed. I was going to say, <laughs> I, I think, honestly, people are more concerned on their livelihood than actually being a preacher of the good news. Mm-hmm. We was actually having this discussion at, at lunch, right? Like the brothers, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, like they said these guys died without really having any kind of wealth passed on to their, mm-hmm. to their family. Why? Because the mission was greater than the wealth, right? Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, now, as we had a few months ago, uh, what's on the rise? Money. Money's on the rise. Everything else is on the decline, right? So, you I, you know, I'm not just saying, like, this is all he cares about or whatever because I'm not really here to bash nobody and whatever, but you have very few people who really cares about preaching the good news. Uh, I know Nigel has that one brother on, on uh, TikTok that he likes with the raspy voice. Like, don't care about none of your feelings. He going to tell you how a T.I. is, and that's it. Right, just preaching the good news, and you know he get he's getting the following with that. You know what I'm saying? So I I, I just think that's what it is. We're kind of becoming more of a kind of you know soft and <laughs> generation and, and and set of people, which is why I give reverence to you know uh, just reverence and not like any kind of worship, but to the to the leaders of, of like early Rome. Like these guys were uh, uh, strict on their beliefs, and it wasn't no you know what I'm saying. Uh, uh, back backbiting you know, or anything crazy like that, which mm. we we should t- kind of take a page from that. You know what I'm saying? Be strict to what you actually believe, hold true to that, and don't bend. With what you said earlier about um, the church not using like terms like resurrection, salvation, whatever the one don't use, is that like maybe a uh, depiction of like in Daniel when he was talking about there's going to be a ruler who comes along. He's going to try and like alter religious practices. and He's going to mm. change times and, and calendars and dates. Like I'm thinking that that sounds a lot like a lot like what's supposed to happen. I should say when the, the man of desolation is supposed to come, man, I can't remember the word. The man of desolation, I think is the mm-hmm. word, but um, he's supposed to come and change times, change practices, change mm-hmm. norms. And I don't think it's necessarily going to be a man. I think it might a be an system. entity. Yeah. It'll be a system. The the Daniel uses a man as a symbolism, mm. but I think it will be a system. So I, I mean, what do y'all think about that? Yeah, for sure, man. I, and I mean, oh, it's it's just scary hours right now because like the levels of compromise that we're seeing is so crazy Don't high, and it's like you know the same thing that we was talking about. Like you know, now they looked at the service last year. It's like. How do we 10x this service? <laughs> like, you know, they had flames and like, what are they going to have a whole demon rising from the stage or floating down and Jesus fighting in a sword fight? Like, <laughs> it's craziness to me. It's almost like, uh, what? how do you, what, when you used to go to the Kravitz Center, they did um, the performing arts. It's like almost mm. performing <laughs> arts that you're yeah. going in to see. And a lot of people who's going, who's getting ready to gear up to go to a service like that is like, what are you really looking for? Like if you're, if you're, you know, blinded partially and you think you're in pursuit of truth and you know that they're coming with theatrics, where are you getting dressed to go out there for that day? What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Lee Strauss. Thank you for watching the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. And hey, listen, every 1,000 subscribers, we're giving away free merch. But look, if you want merch on your own, be sure to check out the website below. And hey, once again, appreciate for watching. Well, I wanted to ask y'all this. Well, well, just to comment on what Lee said a while ago, uh, I think that's a an interesting angle to look at it with the man of desolation and the prophecy of Daniel and everything, because it, it does seem to align with what we're seeing, and especially what the news Nigel gave us of them wanting to change or not use certain words in in their Easter service is mm-hmm. just 
uh, baffling. But I'm thinking about there are folks who, again, they're not innocent in the sense that they should do more uh, reading and, and search of knowledge. But for some people, I think they've been born into a certain situation where they are similar to me. Like I've been born and raised in the Church of God Seventh Day. And while I do feel that I've done my own reading and learning and things like that, uh, other folks are born into church, let's say like on a, in the Sunday church. And what they know is Easter is the celebration of, of Christ's resurrection. You know, they don't, they don't look much more into the, the origins of it, hmm. but in their heart, they believe that they're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus, the Easter bunny and things they know about it, but maybe it's not even that appealing to them because for them, they're like, you know, that's more for the kids. The main thing is that Jesus resurrected and we celebrate that. Do you think there's a place for them? Do you think like they're standing in error before God in that type of situation where they're 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 sincere in their worship of God? Yeah. When, I don't. I don't. You know. I don't. I think that there will be grace, and the reason why. Go ahead, man. Speak. <laughs> this will be good. But I wish I could talk. Did I say I anything? Can. Go I ahead. Don't, I want to hear no speak. kiss in the teeth. Yeah, I mean. I don't want to hear no kiss Stand in the on what you about to say. So, I think that they'll have grace. Why? Mm -hmm. Because I think they perhaps, and I'm saying the people of older, older age, because there was really no technology to look this stuff up. Mm -hmm. But now that we have technology, there's no excuses. But maybe back in the 50s, 60s, is really kind of just trying to find a book that you can perhaps believe. Um, but but then the thing is with books, you got to kind of take some of this out, you know, because all a lot of the stuff in there is not going to be true. So you have to, like you alluded to, trying to egg hunt, trying to find the right eggs. Mm. So that's why I say I think there may be grace for the only reason, and the only reason because there just wasn't a... a, a, a the information wasn't available and before, before before and before you get there before you get there i would chime my i'm, I'm chiming with daryl real quick i think there is not necessarily a grace thing but i do see a sense where if someone is truly trying to seek truth trying to seek like the knowledge and stuff i think there is going to be some kind of i don't want to say compassion but they will have some kind of 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 I don't want to, I don't know what to say not leeway yeah, if you god don't know, will you give don't them know. i do also want to say god will show you if you truly are in a repentant heart and you want to learn will it look like how every will it look like how i got it will it look like how you got it i don't know but that's 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 that's, that's all i could say like but god will give you something the thing that i think about it with this too is like again would would someone like i described in that situation they're born in church let's say a sunday church but mm -hmm. they're born in church they they believe in jesus and what they know is easter is a celebration i don't know that he would even think to look about the origins of it because for them the origins of easter is we sell you know what i'm saying so like sure. if that's the situation they're in is there grace and uh <coughs> Nigel, you want to chime in before because i have my response no too. we don't want to hear it <laughs> thank you the word says just play. the word says leave them alone they be blind leaders of the blind and if the blind lead the blind <laughs> Both shall fall into the pit. So I'll say this because I didn't even know about that Constantine uh, part that they. He asked a question and he run over my response. I, that, that I didn't even know about that Constantine part that they actually made mandated that. So that was pretty interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think he's coming. So I, I I'll say this and I'm not going to go too deep. Right, I'm just going to share a link after we're done. You guys can look at it and then maybe we can have a discussion on this. But but I just wonder what else was shared. That's it. I just wonder what else what else was mandated mm. by Constantine. Yeah, because there was other That's things it. being discussed at that time. That's, that's all I'm going to say. Man, we do a whole lot of compromising, and 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 the, the word is plain, plain. No, no, no. It's, 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 it's not. It's not compromising. It's not compromising. It's what else was shared at during that time that was implemented in the Bible. We talking about if someone okay. keeps Easter with all of their heart. And they going in the church with their Bible in they and they tucked under their arm and they giving God everything on Good Friday and in here on Easter Sunday early, they are blind, period. And the word says that the leaders who lead them into this blindness 
both of them are responsible. Like we can't, we, there's no, if the word says like a plus or one plus two equals three, like how many times are we going to look for uh, variables and opportunities where one plus two can equal anything more than three? Well, a couple just really quickly. Um, two scriptures come to my mind when I thought about it, because I do feel that these people who in, in that very specific scenario that I'm talking about, if they're devout in what they're doing, uh, two scriptures come to mind. The first is to whom much is given, much will be required. So the knowledge that they're lacking, th th there's, a, there's a certain level of knowledge that they've been given at a time, right? That's not, again, not to say you shouldn't continue to seek, continue to learn, but if in, they're in a certain uh, position in life or time in life where that's the knowledge that they have and they're serving God to the best that they know, then that's the standard they held that's, to. They, yeah, they're going to be required of, to the level that you know. Now, um, the other scripture that I thought of, James 4, 17, therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And so when, now the, the difference that would, I think in my mind that would come about is when, if there's anyone who's watching now who does celebrate Easter and now you're being made aware of the origins and things like that, for you to know, for you to now deny it and not do the research on your own, you know, this scripture is saying, part. you know, you're going to be held responsible for that, right? Because if you know better, you should do better, right? The, the truth is supposed to cause you to change, but you have to really come to the realization of that truth. And so to him to know who knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. I would only say this, and I'll stay off of it, is that I, I believe we serve a great, big, wonderful God. And if someone is is fervently trying to head in their direction and they're going in the wrong direction, I believe God will put people in their lives to redirect them because they have a willing mindset and all they need is a little bit of guidance to get to where they need to go, i.e. Saul being Paul. Saul had, you know, was crucifying the people and whatever, whatever, but God saw something in him that only needed redirection and then turned him and turned him the way that he needed to go. So no, absolutely not. And I'm going to stand on it a hundred percent. Like if someone dies in Easter and Christmas in Halloween and they never make the turn to come out of it, then you got to stand and answer for that because there's plenty of indication that God is going to give someone. The word says, all you have to do is knock and he's there. And I, I, that's the scripture I was going to bring up. Thank you. Go ahead. Go yeah. Ahead. So it, it's not complicated. Like you, you can be on a remote Island with just with Jim Jones and 300 people about to drink poison. But if you truly believed in your heart that you were trying to do something for God, God is going to give you an indication, even if it's just in your spirit to say, no, don't well, drink yeah, this. that's that's called the fruits of the spirit. But but what we're talking about is like, oh well, there'll be grace if they die in Halloween and Easter. Of course, and there'll be grace and, if there's mm, well. it, based on what I'm talking about. Of course, there'll be grace if you wasn't given the access to the information. I know what y'all saying. Like uh, God is gonna make a way where you can get the get the the correct information. I get that, but you know, I I just don't see, I just don't know a world without internet. It's just tough. Like but, if you didn't have that kind of uh, resources like what before the like, internet and after the internet is the Holy Spirit. The other, the other thing too, I think um, the scripture that says, you know, man looks on the outward, but God looks at the heart. Like, you know, <laughs> I, I hear what you're saying. Believe me. Cause especially if we, you know, we're not talking about Christmas, right. But some of the symbols and the trees and things, but you know, the Easter egg, right. And the bunnies and you know, it's like, where, what place does that have? You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm it's just almost think, like saying I like Christmas lights. So, you know, Hey, I'm just thinking of that scenario <laughs> where they they have uh, that that lifestyle that they grew up in. And, you know, God, God sees their heart. And I'm not using that to say Foolish don't don't misconstrue me because I know people will be like, oh, God knows my heart. Right. Like, yeah, he knows it's desperately wicked. So don't <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not saying like you're, you're just going to get away on good intentions or seemingly good intentions. But like God knows, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't really speak to people who are devout Christians. Cause you know what? There's a lot of folks in, in non Sabbath uh, churches who are like out here helping the poor. Like look at all these missionaries and out there. Give like, me one biblical example of a, a biblical example. Yes, sir. Of, of a Sunday preacher. What do you mean? Of someone biblical? who was not of the faith, who was doing good things and like how you're just describing. What do you mean? I mean, 
Well, the only wasn't, one wasn't the, the the parable of um, the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan. What are you talking about? Break 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 me down. <laughs> Look it up. I don't got time to break it down. What about Simon? But you, and Simon? you ask you ask for you ask for a, a scripture. I gave because, you a scripture. Now you want to break it down? No, because what I'm saying is like, like think of it logically. Like how how is it that I mean God can use anybody, right? Because even the donkey, He can use a donkey to to speak and stuff like that. Mm. But will God use a dirty vessel to bring about the things of God? Like in in what? Well, give me an example of a dirty vessel that God used to bring about change for people or for an individual but what do you mean the woman by, at the well yeah what do you mean by dirty because like and, and the, uh falling. the uh the prostitute that allowed um uh, was it uh, but then god said to go and sin no more they're not dirty the, vessels no, they're not the the interaction he did use her though he met her oh, he yeah. met her at the right. well yeah while she was still in her sin. My only thing is, is that if there's so much grace that's sufficient. You don't like these examples. That's what yeah. you No, I'm saying, <laughs> all, all, I'm, all I'm saying is, her, all I'm you saying is, is, is that if there's so much grace that's sufficient for all these different scenarios, what's the point of going to church every week? Nah, yeah. What's the point of staying in the way when grace is sufficient for any mindset that you have where you think you're doing the right thing? Well, because there's the word says that there's a way unto a man that seems correct, but, the but in the end death. thereof is death. death. Yeah, that's true. But I'm just saying, uh, aside from the biblical example, I'm just thinking like people like Billy Graham, who was a Sunday guy, right? This man touched millions of people across the world and inspired them to start believing in Jesus. And some of those folks who started believing in Jesus probably learned the truth about the Sabbath and, and not to celebrate Easter. So I'm saying like good came from what he did, even if, you know, he wasn't a hundred percent aligned. So like, I'm just saying like, like I was saying, there's people out there who are doing missions to, other parts of the world and doing good things, right? Like they're not, there's still more for them to learn, I guess, as far as definitely with like, you know, uh, keeping the Sabbath holy and not, not celebrating Easter and, and Christmas for, for what we know to be true. But you know who also you know? did good deeds? I just looked it up. So it wasn't a fact that I came in with Ted Bundy. He worked at a suicide hotline and this was 1971. So, I mean, we talking about good deeds. Ted Bundy did good deeds. Who is Ted Bundy? He's a Look mass it up. murderer. Ted Bundy is the he's a he's a murderer. murderer, yeah. Oh, I, f- I figured. <laughs> well, well, I mean. Bro, why would you bring up a Well, we like talking that? about just random people who did good deeds and saying, this is almost the same thing no, we were talking random. about. We, we talked about people in, the, well, okay. Well, David did kind of bring up a person, but I didn't. I don't know that person. Well, Billy Graham? I mean, well, I don't know. Y'all don't know who Billy, Billy Graham, Graham is? Yeah, man. He's a huge what? TBN preacher. Oh, my gosh. Billy, what's the name, Billy? Billy, Billy Graham. 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 Are you Whatever. kidding me? Graham. Yes. Okay. Well, hey, I stay in my bubble. Hey, look, <laughs> we can agree to disagree. And here's the thing. Here's another thing, beautiful uh, people out there. We ain't God. He ain't God either. Nigel ain't God. <laughs> Levi ain't God. David ain't God. You talk to God and you ask him what you, what, what I should and do that, for and myself. That, and that's the problem we run into with a lot of Christians because when you give them truth, they were like, oh, you're not God. I'm not going to listen to you. But it's true, though. When, when the word is plain and all you're trying to do is give it to them I mean, in I'm love, God, you know, and because we live in a hypersensitive uh, society, you can't give people truth in love at all without them feeling I mean, offended. I agree you, with that sentiment. That is, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> not that that's what DJ was doing. But, yeah, what you're saying is true. When Listen, the truth is not always easy to take, um, but it is helpful and and nourishing to your spirit and you need to be able to i think the most important thing is those who do come upon the truth like i said to him who know if to do good and do with it not to you it is now sin because you know better and the truth is supposed to bring you or, or is to elicit change the truth causes you to change for the better so for those uh, of, of our listeners and watchers who may have been hearing hearing these things for the first time about easter you are now commissioned to to change based on the truth that you've heard yep and grace is not sufficient you can't rely on ignorance being bliss when you know it's out there and it's open so you can <laughs> lean on grace if you want to and 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 be you know to live your best life but that god is a god of principle amen, amen. <laughs> <laughs> okay i don't know if y'all got anything else uh, Amen, nah. brother. Hey, All that right. was a good episode, man. I like this. Well, this has been another powerful hour with the Hold Your Point podcast. Right yeah. before Easter, I hope everybody who's planning to go to an Easter service can watch this before they go to Easter, so you know we can y'all can just open up your thought process and do some digging, man. But until next time, man, make sure you like and subscribe. Tell a friend and tell a friend, and we out. Of here.